The big goal for Japan's Smart Lander for Investigating Moon, or SLIM mission, will be to land with high precision, hence the lander's nickname, the Moon Sniper. Though the word precise is still a relative one when it comes to guiding a spacecraft down to the lunar surface. Landing in precise locations could help scientists get closer to parts of the moon to determine if water is on the surface and if it is habitable for human life. The year began with a remarkable achievement when Japan's slim probe successfully landed on the moon. This monumental project, which had been in development for years, showcased groundbreaking technology that has the potential to redefine space exploration. However, amidst the excitement, an unsettling discovery has emerged, leaving scientists across the globe in shock. Japan's Aerospace Exploration Agency confirmed the capsule had successfully separated from the Hayabusa 2. What terrifying revelation did the slim probe uncover? What secrets have emerged regarding this mission? And why did NASA keep them hidden from the public eye? Join us in this video as we reveal everything about Japan's Moon Sniper mission and uncover the truth behind NASA's hidden agenda. The Moon is an incredibly harsh environment, characterized by extreme temperatures, the absence of an atmosphere, and constant exposure to radiation. However, the Moon's unique location holds a treasure trove of secrets about our solar system, which captivates scientists and researchers. While the United States, Russia, India, and China have successfully reached the moon, much about the moon remains veiled in mystery. Japan, driven by a multitude of questions and mysteries to unravel, has recently embarked on its own lunar exploration mission. At the top of their agenda was the investigation into the existence of extraterrestrials on the moon. Despite a series of unsuccessful attempts by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, they ultimately achieved a successful soft landing on the lunar surface. However, upon reaching their destination, the Japanese scientists made a startling discovery. The moon was not as we have been led to believe. It became apparent that NASA had concealed a substantial amount of information. Stay tuned as we uncover the revelations behind the Japanese scientists' claim. We finally found what NASA was hiding. On January 19th, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, pulled off an incredible feat by landing its special probe on the moon. The Smart Lander for Investigating Moon, SLIM spacecraft, executed an extraordinary lunar landing, delicately touching down on the moon's surface with remarkable precision. This remarkable achievement solidified Japan's position as the fifth country ever to successfully land a vehicle on the lunar surface. The project had its beginnings way back in 2005, when the idea of constructing a small lunar landing experiment satellite was conceived. By 2013, SLIM had emerged as one of the seven key missions for the International Space Station, ISS. Fast forward to April 2016, and SLIM became an official JAXA project with Mitsubishi securing the contract to build the spacecraft. The primary objective of this mission was to test a groundbreaking landing technology. If successful, the project would showcase a precise pinpoint landing technique that could revolutionize space exploration moving forward. SLIM's arduous journey to the moon took approximately four months. Though the word precise is still a relative one when it comes to guiding a spacecraft down to the lunar surface. It commenced with a ride alongside the Gray Imaging and Spectroscopy mission, XRism. After separating from XRism, SLIM changed its trajectory to prepare for lunar orbit entry. By December 25, 2023, it gracefully entered lunar orbit and culminated in one of the most flawless moon landings ever witnessed. Moon landings have always confronted a major challenge landing at the designated spot. The Smart Lander for Investigating the Moon, SLIM, was a concept designed to leverage cutting-edge technology to achieve a perfect moon landing. The success or failure of this mission held immense significance for the space exploration community, as it would determine whether a new method for precise lunar landings or landings on any other celestial body for that matter, had been discovered. The focus for NASA and other space agencies had shifted from landing anywhere on the moon to landing with pinpoint accuracy at specific locations. Fortunately, on January 19th, 
The mission achieved a significant breakthrough when the lander executed an exceptionally precise soft landing on its target location. However, despite the successful touchdown, a power issue emerged. Due to the probe's landing orientation, the solar panel, which was meant to face the sun for recharging, ended up facing another direction. Consequently, Slim was unable to replenish its power supply. JAXA's ground team had to rely on backup batteries to deploy two rovers for surface measurements. Although the multiband spectroscopic camera, MBC, mounted on SLIM managed to capture some images during this period, JAXA determined that the lander had not sustained any major damage upon landing. Therefore, they decided to leave the probe on the moon and wait until the sun's angle changed to align with the solar panels. It's important to note that a lunar day lasts 14 Earth days, meaning that it takes a full 14 days for the sun to complete one cycle of rising and setting on the moon. Initially, JAXA had planned to operate the probe for at least two weeks, taking advantage of solar power. However, due to the unexpected crash landing, they were left with no choice but to wait until the end of the lunar day. At that point, the sun's rays would illuminate the solar panel, allowing JAXA to finally harness its power for the probe. The Japanese team behind this mission has successfully demonstrated the possibility of achieving highly precise landings on the moon. Not only that, but they have also shown that it's feasible to achieve a soft landing, a task that has proven challenging even for esteemed agencies like NASA. During NASA's Apollo missions, for example, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin encountered complications during their lunar module landing. They faced severe communication issues with the base, and various alarms were triggered. Ultimately, it appeared that the automatic landing systems had failed, forcing Armstrong to take manual control to land the module. Even then, they landed in a completely incorrect location. The fact that Slim landed on target is a significant achievement. Recent attempts to land on the moon have often ended in failure, with many probes crashing, sometimes in unplanned locations. However, Japan's Slim managed to execute a controlled crash landing that was gentle enough to allow for the deployment of the rovers. To put it into perspective, Imagine what would happen if a rocket suddenly lost one of its engines mid-flight. In the worst-case scenario, it would crash and burn. In the best-case scenario, it would make an emergency landing at the nearest possible spot. But in Slim's case, even though it lost its nozzle, it still managed to land precisely on target. This accomplishment has earned Japan a highly esteemed position among the countries that have dared to explore the moon. But to explore what NASA has been hiding, let's first find out how Japan achieved a soft landing, unlike many countries in the 21st century. Why have there been very relative successful soft moon landing in the 21st century? And how exactly did Japan achieve this impressive feat? It's still baffling why moon spaceships in the 21st century struggled to land successfully while NASA was landing astronauts on the moon 50 years ago. Many skeptics have raised questions about this, and some experts in the scientific community have come up with plausible new explanations. Back then, during the space race, the US and Russian governments were in fierce competition, each trying to prove its superiority in space exploration. The moon became the battlefield, and NASA, fully backed by the US government, invested heavily in creating top-notch lunar capsules, rovers, and landers. However, Today, there is no space war. Nations that have completed lunar missions do so out of curiosity or to make a mark in the history of space exploration. Consequently, the probes and space vessels of today are built using lower quality materials to cut costs. Furthermore, most landers are constructed by private companies, and statistically speaking, these private built landers have a 100% failure rate on the moon. A prime example is the Japanese ice-based lander that crashed on the moon in 2023. Another factor that poses challenges for landers and space probes is the moon itself. Communication on the moon is a major problem due to the interference caused by the giant white satellite. This interference often leads to probes landing in the wrong spot. Paolo Ferry, head of the operation, told us the landing was always a big risk. Additionally, the lack of atmosphere on the moon makes it impossible for a craft to land with parachutes. Everything depends solely on the engine, 
and the pilot or controller must find a way to skillfully guide the probe to a safe landing while grappling with communication issues. Ultimately, if the probe is too heavy, a crash becomes inevitable. China's Chang'e 3 lunar mission in 2013 was the first successful soft moon landing since Russia's Luna 24 in 1976. However, most other landings, such as those by Russia, have had worse outcomes. Given all the landing problems, it was high time someone came up with a solution. Fortunately, Japan stepped in to provide assistance. It's worth noting that the Japan Aeronautical Space Agency has been a long-standing partner of NASA, so it's no surprise that the new Japanese guidance system would prove useful for future NASA missions. For example, the EMUS program, which is scheduled to host the next set of humans on the moon since the Apollo missions, will likely incorporate this groundbreaking technology. However, there is a significant issue. Something strange happened to Slim on the moon, and JAXA hasn't been able to determine the cause. The probe, which was meticulously designed to land upright on its target, inexplicably ended up landing face down. Speculation suggests that an external force caused this mishap. Unless this mystery is solved, there's no guarantee that future NASA missions will go according to plan. So, what exactly happened to Slim on the Moon? Right now, it remains a mystery. This JAXA probe was built to land in a very precise manner. For instance, its legs were equipped with crumple zones to ensure a soft landing, even at higher speeds. The target area for the landing was a 15-degree slope on an impact crater known as the Scioli Crater. The probe landed precisely at the coordinates 25.24889 east and 13.31549 south on the slope, just 55 meters off target. This location was chosen to provide optimal sun exposure. The probe's rear legs were intentionally built slightly shorter than the front legs to accommodate the slope. Additionally, JAXA programmed the vehicle to flip at a 45-degree angle just before touchdown, ensuring a gentler impact regardless of the weight. Moreover, it featured two Mitsubishi engines and 12 attitude control thrusters. Multiple engines are typically necessary for lunar probes to facilitate a smoother landing, and the thrusters play a crucial role in reducing descent speed. SLIM's landing was designed to occur in two stages. First, the landing thrusters and a smaller thruster would activate to tilt the spacecraft to its side. Then, the five crushable aluminum lattice landing legs would engage to cushion the final landing. In essence, Slim had all the necessary components for a successful touchdown. Unfortunately, it ended up landing on its nose, and the reason behind this remains unknown. One unsettling theory suggests that extraterrestrials may be responsible. JAXA themselves admitted that one of Slim's engines failed just before making contact with the lunar surface. According to their knowledge, the cause was an external factor. In other words, something must have tampered with the engines, leading to the probe's crash landing. What could be on the moon that altered Slim's engine? Could this same external factor be responsible for other lunar crashes? Some conspiracy theorists, who have long believed in the existence of aliens on the moon, propose that these beings are to blame. However, all of this is merely speculation based on the mystery surrounding the event. The actual facts remain unknown. At present, all JAXA knows is that Slim's panels are facing westward. For now, there isn't much that can be done for the probe unless, of course, the sun shines on it once again. The only way JAXA can uncover the truth is if they obtain satellite imagery, such as from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. However, compared to most other moon landings in the 21st century, the Slim mission can be considered a success. If nothing else, the level of precision displayed during this mission has earned it a top rank among previous lunar landings. The landing sites were marked in kilometers, but JAXA measured the landing site in meters, and SLIM hit the mark with a deviation of just 50 meters. Furthermore, SLIM managed to deploy two experimental rovers and utilize as much onboard science equipment as possible before its battery ran out. The two rovers, named Lunar Excursion Vehicles, or LEVs, have their own unique characteristics. Levy 1 is a frog-like rover that moves with hopping movements, while Levy 2 is a small ball that splits into a wheeled camera and waggles along, similar to sea turtles on a beach. 
Li V-1 successfully communicated with ground stations and received a test radio wave data transmission from its counterpart, LEV-2. However, JAXA has not yet received any images from LEV-1. It was LEV-2 that captured an image of SLIM on the moon, revealing that the thrusters were facing upwards instead of downwards. Currently, both rovers are on standby, awaiting the return of sunlight. According to our calculations, the lunar day will be approaching its end around January 31st, so LEV-1 and LEV-2 should resume activity around that time. It's worth noting that the SLIM spacecraft was quite expensive, costing a staggering 88.18 billion yen, or $120 million to develop. Initially weighing 200 kilograms, it reached a weight of 700 kilograms after being fully loaded with fuel. The fuel was necessary to power the thrusters during the landing process. The Li V-1 and Li V-2 rovers added further financial and technological demands to the mission. Li V-2, which has since been renamed Sora Q, is a complex 0.25 kilograms rover jointly developed by JAXA, Sony, Tomy, and Doshisha University. It is currently the smallest and lightest rover ever created, about the size of a baseball. Sora Q was developed using a combination of toy technology, sensor robotics technology, and JAXA's space technology. It was designed to operate autonomously and adapt to the lunar environment. Speaking to the press, SLIM's project manager, Shinichiro Sakai, stated, We've proven that you can land wherever you desire, rather than where you are able to. This will inspire more and more people, ideally Japanese missions, to attempt landings in unexplored areas of the moon. Undoubtedly, this is a significant achievement for Japan's space agency. With this new technology, perhaps space agencies will finally be able to send probes, rovers, or even astronauts to the far side of the moon. The far side of the moon, also known as the dark side of the moon, has always been surrounded by controversy and conspiracy. Over the years, numerous rumors and conspiracy theories about the existence of aliens on this part of the moon have emerged. From peculiar structures and shapes scattered across its surface to strange radio interference and unexplained crashes of lunar missions, there is much about this side of the moon that remains mysterious. At one point, there were rumors that NASA had sent astronauts to the far side of the moon only for them to discover a crashed alien spacecraft. Some even claimed that they brought back preserved alien corpses for analysis. However, NASA has vehemently denied such accusations, maintaining that the last manned mission was Apollo 17. What is the future of space exploration? And how has JAXA impacted shifted the goal forward? JAXA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, has made a significant impact in various domains, including space exploration, scientific research, and technological advancements. JAXA has successfully launched and operated spacecraft for lunar missions, asteroid sample return missions, and satellite deployments for Earth observation and communication purposes. Notably, JAXA's Hayabusa spacecraft achieved the historic feat of returning samples from an asteroid in 2010, and repeated this accomplishment with the Hayabusa 2 mission in 2020. JAXA actively collaborates with other space agencies, such as NASA, ESA, and international partners, contributing to cooperative space missions. The agency's involvement in the International Space Station, ISS, project includes providing modules, experiments, and astronauts, fostering scientific research, technology development, and advancing human space exploration. JAXA's approach to the SLIM mission demonstrates its ability to optimize resources without compromising its ambitions. With a budget of 18 billion yen, equivalent to 121.5 million US dollars, JAXA has achieved remarkable cost effectiveness. This stands in stark contrast to the budgets allocated for space exploration missions by NASA, which are often known for their grand scale and substantial financial investments. To provide some context, one of NASA's most renowned space exploration endeavors was the Apollo program. This ambitious initiative successfully sent astronauts to the moon, resulting in groundbreaking scientific discoveries and the collection of valuable data about the lunar surface. However, the Apollo program came with a hefty price tag, estimated to be around $25.4 billion across multiple missions. 
By highlighting this comparison, we can appreciate JAXA's ability to achieve impressive results while operating within a more constrained budget. It showcases their resourcefulness and efficiency in pursuing their space exploration goals. JAXA's global recognition has been on the rise ever since it became a trusted partner of NASA and the European Space Agency. One major project the agency made significant contributions to was the International Space Station, ISS. Additionally, Japan also joined forces to construct several modules for the Gateway Lunar Station. Amidst all these achievements, JAXA has been busy planning its own missions. The slim landing is just one of many missions to come. For instance, JAXA is currently preparing for an upcoming visit to Mars. The Martian Moon Exploration spacecraft is expected to launch in 2024 with the goal of collecting samples and data from the Martian moons Phobos and Deimos. To carry out this mission, JAXA will utilize its impressive H-3 launch vehicle. The H-3 launch vehicle is a two-stage rocket that employs liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as propellants. The first stage is powered by three engines, while the second stage is powered by a single engine. The H-3 rocket was first launched in March 2023, and although the initial launch went well, the second stage failed to ignite upon command, resulting in a failed test launch. The next planned flight is scheduled for the end of February 2024. However, an even more massive rocket called New Glenn is currently being constructed and will be used for Mars missions. New Glenn is a colossal launch booster, standing at a height of 98 meters. It is powered by seven engines on the first stage and two engines on the second stage, allowing it to carry nearly 50 tons of payload into Earth's orbit. The inaugural flight of New Glenn is set for August 2024, and it will carry NASA's Escapade Mars mission into space. NASA is taking a bold step by flying this rocket, as it has never been adequately tested with such a heavy payload before. All of these developments demonstrate that space exploration is evolving and becoming increasingly fascinating. With Japan's state-of-the-art landing technology and NASA's exceptional quality probes and launches, the future looks promising for upcoming space missions. This leads to the question, did Japan send a probe to the moon solely to explore the next generation of planetary landing technology? Or was there something more at play? Well, there is another obvious reason why the Japanese may have sent SLIM to the moon, to explore space-based solar power. On January 11th, the United States Space Agency published a study examining the feasibility of setting up solar power collection through a spacecraft in Earth's orbit and transmitting that power back to the surface using microwaves. The goal is to create a source of clean energy. Although the actual costs involved in manufacturing and launching these systems are still uncertain, many experts are considering this concept. If successful, it could help the United States and other nations achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions before the deadline. Collecting solar energy in orbit presents a distinct advantage over collecting solar energy on Earth. Up there, the Earth's atmosphere is almost non-existent, ensuring access to the purest form of solar energy. The idea of harnessing this pure energy and wirelessly transmitting it to even the most remote parts of the world is highly appealing. Many space agencies, including NASA and JAXA, are actively pursuing this direction. The solar technology featured in SLIM has already provided ample data for these agencies. All that remains is for NASA or any other organization to build upon what Japan has accomplished and the ultimate solar energy collector can be created. However, some individuals express skepticism about this technology. They question the safety of the energy generated by such an instrument, and they are concerned about the high costs associated with building and maintaining these systems. Experts have predicted that this conceptual system could produce power at a cost of 61 cents per kilowatt hour, which is significantly higher than the 2 to 5 cents per kilowatt hour generated by terrestrial solar plants. Will this project truly be beneficial? Or will it become another costly venture for governments and their agencies? In any case, interest in space exploration has recently surged as more and more nations strive to achieve a lunar landing. It feels like a new space race is upon us. Fortunately, JAXA's groundbreaking landing will pave the way for a smoother transition for the next generation of space explorers, 
regardless of their origin. In an official press statement, JAXA stated, although SLIM's activities on the moon were originally planned for only a few days, the necessary preparations for recovery will continue to acquire further technical and scientific data. The preparations aim to promptly conduct 10-band high-resolution spectroscopic observations once the solar illumination conditions improve and SLIM recharges with power generated by the solar array. In the end, we will have to wait and see how much data SLIM can gather when the sun shines on it once more. Nonetheless, the space exploration community has achieved another significant milestone that will be remembered for years to come. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the other videos you see on your screen right now.